Hi, thank you for inviting me. I have routine because I want to keep my like body still fresh. The next question is going to be a little bit hard. Yeah, of course. I think it's a part of the life. Yeah, it's so easy to burn out. And what what is your purpose? I done my best. I did my best. What's going to be the first thing that you're going to do after we get out of this quarantine? Dancing needs to be fun. Definitely not. Parents uh, raised me to be like humble and um, patient, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's hard. But I think it's never too late to start. What's Daniel Milan's plan to stay alive? So kids, listen. Never say that you cannot dance and learn in the same time. you today we have a special guest and it's my good uh, good friend and amazing choreographer uh, a special person most of all it's Daniel Milan hi hi thank you for inviting me hey what's up how are you doing I feel good I try to be positive in this time yeah I feel good thank you I have right. to do right that's true okay uh, because we have a um, several things to talk about i'm just going to get into the question so uh my first question would be because i'm I, i'm trying to do with these interviews not to be something standard i'm trying to bring something fresh about you so people can know you better so how does actually a day of uh, daniel milan look like like a normal day not a quar quarantine <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, not in these days, but like a normal day. I wake up in the morning, not too early, but like around eight, nine. So not too early, but not too late. Right. I wake up and uh, usually uh, the morning time, I just chill. I watch uh, videos, maybe some movie. I usually watch in, in morning time. Um, I dig for musics uh, because, like, we dancers, we usually, and like dance teachers, choreographers, we usually work in the evening. Right. So, yeah, our free time is basically like the daytime and the morning time. Um, yeah, of course, like breakfast. After breakfast, um, still some some kind of creative work like uh, looking for music um, working on choreographies then of course lunch and after lunch i usually immediately go to go to teach go to practice or i go to um to rehearsals yeah and i usually finish around 9 10 sometimes uh, 11 in the evening uh, if I finish in time and um, on Sunday, I just go to cheer with my friends um, or I just go home. Uh, yeah, as far as I know, and um, because we, we, we met during the, uh, this period of time since we know each other, um, I had the pleasure of uh, judge with you and teach with you so many times. And I also know that you have um, some kind of routine that you do every day, like to empower yourself and to stretch and stuff, stuff like that. It's basically something that, that as I recall, you do it every day, right? Uh, the practice and the stretch day, especially the stretching and most like the workout day, what I, uh, what I like to do like daily and uh, somehow I put it also in my class because then my student can also also get these things from me uh, but yeah like of course like uh, I have routine because I want to keep my like 
but it's still fresh and like still gets used to the used to the working because for example in these days like in this situation it's a little bit harder maybe to keep this routine and one day I did just like a workout and I felt after the, the day after that I'm dying from muscle fever and uh, yeah usually I don't feel this because I have the routine right yeah right. Okay, uh, the next question is going to be a little bit hard. So, <laughs> uh, I would like to ask you if, uh, did you ever cry, like cry from the bottom of your heart, or did you ever feel alone, like really alone, or even get depressed? Um, yeah, of course, I think it's a part of the life, and I think everyone, everyone feels this. Like, yeah, I also cry because of sadness, because of stress, because of uh, happiness also. <laughs> but like, yeah, crying is not definitely a bad thing. You just have to process. It's just have to process the feeling, what, what you have inside. Um, I'm happy that I don't, I don't cry a lot. But yeah, of course, of course it happens. But I think it's just part of the life. And yeah, it's, it really helps sometimes uh depressed um not a lot of times i try to avoid <laughs> I, try, I try to avoid it uh but of course sometimes i can get also like close to the feeling uh, but i always try to find something what helps um to take out of it for example friends new motivation friends music events, events, this helps a lot. And I think it's also important thing if if we have some routine in our, our life, but um, always something new and not like every day is the same because uh, yeah, it's so easy to burn out and it helps to avoid it. Right. right. That's fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's per that's a perfect answer. Um, what what is your purpose? What is your goal? What what do you want to achieve? Why do you why why do you have this life going on like this? What what's your final station? Um, like achieving like really something or like I don't know. What, what, when when is it going to be like when Daniel Milan? What what's it going to be like when Daniel Milan is going to say, "Yeah, I'm fulfilled. I have." I feel like I'm. I have everything. I done my best. I did my best. I tried my best. I'm okay. I love my life. I can die tomorrow. Well, actually, I kind of feel feel this every day because I don't have. <laughs> I don't have. I don't want to die. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> sure. I don't have. One, <laughs> I don't have one big goal. What I want to achieve, and then like it's done. Uh, I'm more like uh, I'm, I have of course like small small goals what I want to achieve um, but I rather stay in good flow and I, I rather uh, always have something what uh, brings me forward all the time did you ever so, did you ever uh, when when was that moment how old were you when you thought about yeah this is going to be my life dancing Mm. It's hard because actually I started dancing when I was 16, 17. Um, so you started late? Uh, yeah, late-ish, yes, maybe. But I think it's never too late to start. So true. I would not say it. True, true, true. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was just trying to be positive with all those people or kids that are saying that they are 15 or 14 and they were going to say, oh, I'm already too old to start and blah, blah, blah. That's what I was saying. It's now, yeah, exactly. It's never too late to start. So, Amazing. yes. Um, actually, I don't really remember the point because uh, I'm also, I'm, I'm, I still study as an economist. Uh, so I hope one day that will be my profession. At the university, uh, right? Yes. So kids, listen, never say that you cannot dance and learn in the same time and do exactly. great learning. It's, it's really important. We are dancers. We kind of like, we work with our body and every, 
any kind of injury comes, it's really good to have like plan B and also also like dancing needs to be fun and this needs to be like because we enjoy it. So it's yeah. good to have some other professional other work next to it. Yeah. But like back to the question. Uh I don't really remember the time when I, when it came like it will be my life because it everything came just so natural and like step by step. I started to teach uh, in our dance school in Saged, in the extreme dance school, and um, then I get invitation for workshops, then for judging, choreographing, and it it just came. So as I told you. I never thought like, okay, I want to be a dance teacher, this will be my life, this will be my goal, but um, I just went with the flow. Right, right, that's perfect. Um, do you organize your life in any way? Like put it on a paper, what's your, what's your next step going to be, what I want to achieve, what I need to train for, where I want to travel or stuff like that. And, to make it like step by step how i how how you want to get there definitely not uh if i organize like a ball or workshop i write down things um but in other ways like uh, it would be really good and it would help a lot in my life if i would uh, be this organized <laughs> but sadly i am not um so no i have my points in my head sometimes i can follow them sometimes i just miss something and i just realize oh i wanted to do this but oh okay whatever <laughs> uh, so no <laughs> okay <laughs> um what uh, what do your parents do and uh, how did they affect your life um my parents affected my life i think in the best way i'm so thankful for them um because i came like a really sporty family uh also my mother and also my uh father uh, was and my mother is still like a sport teacher right. and uh, my mother is still like basketball and craft trainer so sport was always Part of my life, um, I was swimming, uh, water polo, uh, climbing, um, archery, inline skating, ice skating, uh, and then the last thing came. Um, so, so, you're kind of, so you're kind of a triple X vogue dancer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. uh, yes, I did a lot of things which had me a lot actually in dancing. Uh, because I know my body already. Uh, thanks, thanks to uh, thanks for this uh, sports. And I think um, also my parents uh, raised me to be like humble and um, patient. So yeah, I'm really happy for for it, and I'm really thankful for them. Basically, a sport, uh, a sport art like family around you yes <laughs> nice <laughs> what's going to be the first thing that you're going to do after we get out of this quarantine <laughs> the first ever thing it will happen step by step so i don't know when when i can do this one but i want to go to good house party definitely <laughs> this will be the first i we don't even care we will I don't even care if they open clubs or not. We do somewhere a good house and like a good techno party because like we need, we need it. Uh, yeah, with our friends. Um, and when like really everything ends, I want to travel again a lot. Um, and also because this situation uh, cancelled a lot of um, a lot of good opportunity like workshops and competitions. Um, Russia, France, Romania, Hungary, everywhere. So um, I would be really happy if, if they will uh, do it later. Mm -hmm. And I want to travel for boss, definitely. <laughs> like Hogan boss. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, name one quality 
that you like in people and one that you don't like. <laughs> it's, I say don't like just because I don't want to say hate, you know? Yeah. Uh, what I love in people, if, like, it's basically the love. If right. they are lovely and they can love and they are happy, and I love this, in, especially in people, like in these kind of people. And uh, what I hate in people, it's the hate. So if people hate, like, hate food, uh -huh. or like, if, yeah, um, that I, I cannot handle that. So, yeah, I'd like to be with positive people and I cannot handle negative people. Did you yeah. meet a lot of, did you meet a lot of haters? Um, yes, maybe a lot, kind of a lot, um, but I try to avoid them. So if I feel like, <laughs> right. people are like, okay, thank you. So I don't really remember them right. because right. I cannot get them. Um, <laughs> name one moment in your life that you would delete if you had the possibility. Um, I would definitely not delete anything from my life because everything, everything um, helped me to be who I am right now. So every, everything, yeah, um, leading me on the journey where I am now. Correct. Uh, so, of course, there are like uh, bad moments and bad memories, and good memories. But I would definitely not date anything from my life. Okay, that's perfect. That's perfect. Uh, <laughs> that's just because you. I I think that it might be even uh, the thing that nothing really, really, really bad happened yet. So. Uh, this might also be the, the, the reason, but uh, hopefully you will stay as positive until the end of your life. Yes, and I think if any really, really bad thing happens, it's still like everything happens for a reason. For a reason. But I hope, I hope like there will not be anything like two, two bad things happen. Right, right, true. Uh, okay. Um, the next question is going to be a little bit, uh, not weird, but it's a little bit large, but try to uh, keep it simple. Don't develop it too much. Um, I'm going to stick to, um, to Charlie Chaplin's speech. Uh, Charlie Chaplin had this movie called The Great Dictator. It's, uh, it's a movie from 1914. So actually at the beginning of the Second World War. And he had this speech that is going viral even now, but it's going viral like one in every two years or stuff like that. Because he did this speech in this movie and it's also uh, actual even right now. It was actual in 1914, it was uh, actual in 1916, in 17, 18, in 2000s and even right now. It talks about uh, people's naivety, people's foolishness, um, the way that people, the big people profit from us. Uh, it's about the technology. It's about the, the way that we use technology. Like back in the days in 1914, there was not so much technology. But he says about the technology that it's supposed to help us have more time, keep people closer to us, help develop love and uh, patience and stuff like that but it's actually getting too far from us because we do not know how to use correctly this technology in many ways so do you think that even in 2020 is the same situation like we have this uh, pandemic isolation everybody stays at home and also you might be feeling that even now in these situations people do not wake up uh, well I hope that people will wake up because uh, I think this this situation right now is also happens uh, for a big reason because people were not uh, focusing on environment, people were not focusing on each other. Like, uh, yeah, we didn't take care about the earth, and I think it also happened because of this one because we can see that since we are in quarantine, everything goes like the nature goes better, uh, the envir environment is cleaner. So 
Yeah, right. I, 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 true. So I think people really need to see these signs as well. And I hope they will. And I hope after this, uh, they start to change in their life. Uh, not because they, they have to, but uh, I hope because they want to. Mm -hmm. uh, because we have the technology and we could use the technology in really good ways. Or like now there are thousands of solutions how we could live, like for example, environmental friendly and uh, making our life still better. Or like, I mean, just not, not using plastic is kind of easy thing. Or if someone just have like a, a glass bottle or metal bottle, it's already good. Or like these small things would already help. Uh, because the technology, I think the technology is is good thing, but we need to use it in good way. Uh, I can actually sense already in these times that people started to help to each other, people started to focusing on uh, take care of each other even more better. Like uh, they use the technology, for example, smartphones, mm -hmm. laptops. Uh, to keep the connection with their loved ones, their friends, and I think it's a really good thing. Also in social media, they start to, like they try to keep each other positive, which is really good. Like young people have to older people, they go to store for them, they take care of them. So I think it's, it's really good. So maybe, or like I definitely feel that this situation is teaching us a lot of things, but we need to remember it. We need to change also when this ends. Right, right. Uh, actually, your response right now just brought me back to the other question. I know exactly what I'm going to do when this quarantine ends. I'm going to meet you in any competition and I'm going to ask you for my water bottle. Try it. <laughs> But I need have... that. I want to protect the environment and I need that from you. Right. True. <laughs> we have that. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, and one more question, one more interesting question for you. What does the ideal woman has to have for you, to be ideal for you? Because it's subjective, of, of course. Like uh, the ideal woman, like the most perfect one for me is like, first of all, she needs to be my best friend. I think it's really important. Nice. Uh, she needs to, she needs to have like a thousand moods or like she, she needs to be also classy sometimes like, uh, you know, like look at like, oh, uh, like uh, still like, uh, sleepy mood still like sometimes goofy sometimes it can happen that they get mad uh, <laughs> so like i think it's it's a really good thing um it's also important thing i think for me it's definitely an important thing to love like same kind of music so like good house music for example right. uh, um, what about the dancing part that's the dancing part. I think it's um, it depends on people, but for me, it's not necessary. But uh, I think uh, with dancers, we can uh, we can, for example, a lot of lot of things that we can talk and we can really understand each other. What we why we are doing things, uh, understanding each other's, for example, schedule because. As I started, as I started the uh, interview, like dancers have like totally different uh, time wise in the day. Right. Uh, and I think uh, in dancing we can express uh, something more to each other. True. 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 Really good, uh, really great answers. Uh, really great answer. Thank you very much, Daniel. Um, one more important thing before we we wrap this interview up. Um, tell uh, tell tell the people where can they find you on which uh, social medias and how. Anyway, I will write it in the description of this video. But uh, better from you, also. 
uh, they can find me in, uh, of course they can find me in Facebook, but I don't really use the Facebook. Um, but they can find me in Instagram, like Dania, like Smilan, if someone has a question or someone wants to ask feedback, like just uh, text to me and um, I answer. Um, yes, I'm also on SoundCloud if someone wants to follow my music. I'm also on SoundCloud, Dania likes Moritz. So, yes, like in these sites. What about YouTube? I don't actually use YouTube. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, really? You don't use YouTube? I don't use YouTube, yes. Oh, so your classes are only on your dance school's page, right? Uh, my classes, my online classes are uh, in a, on an event bright uh, named uh, website. Uh, and all the event uh, is in my all the time in my Instagram story, and they can uh, they can easily uh, find the link in my Instagram stories, and they can uh, they can uh, register in the site. Okay. So you're yeah. a bigger fan. You're 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 a bigger fan of Instagram, right? I think yes, it's more simple and uh, yes, it's easier to catch the videos, pictures there. So. Yes, and I don't like to focus on too many things, so it's enough. I would like to focus more on dancing than on uh, five type of social media. Right. Um, what? Uh, one more thing be be before we we end this. Um, for example, if unfortunately this situation is going to hang out like for several months, uh, what's Daniel Milan's plan to stay alive? Mm. Well, I'm already doing it. Um, I practice not daily, but like uh, one, two, three. Okay, rather three, four uh, times a day. Like practice and training, and of course, like uh, teaching online classes. Uh, and most of the time, I study and uh, I start to like. Um, just practicing uh, music, writing music, writing mixes, practicing more DJing. Okay. Yes. Uh, nice. It, it was a nice time again. Uh, again, we do we do spend here on uh, on Zoom. Thank you so much for your time, mm -hmm. for your preparation, for your answers, for uh, for everything. I hope to see you soon. Yeah. Thank you so much. I hope to see you soon. And thank you guys for watching. Thank you. Bye-bye. Just the best. Bye.